when Martin Luther created his 95 Theses, the quick rundown, or QRD if you will, is the Catholic Church was selling indulgences, meaning that people could donate to the Catholic Church and their punishment for their sins in purgatory prior to their entering heaven would be lessened. Now, if you don't uh, know what purgatory is, I'm not a Catholic, but again, the TLDR, as I understand it, is as follows. Catholic dies. They're going to go to heaven because they were a, a Christian, a Catholic, a follower of Christ and of the, of, of the, the continued secession of leaders of the church, the Pope, starting with Peter, allegedly. This is all according to Catholicism. Um, but before they can enter into heaven, they must suffer a measure of punishment in what's known as purgatory. It's not the same as hell where just non-believers go, but purgatory is essentially a sort of waiting room, uh, is the very oversimplified version of it. Um, the waiting room into heaven, sort of, where you're punished, but not quite to the level that non-believers are in hell, you know. But the Catholic Church would sell these indulgences where you give money to the Catholic Church and they're like, oh, hey, your, your penalties in purgatory are going to be lessened. Yay. So basically you get to sin more um, without facing the consequences because you gave worldly money to the worldly people living at the time in the Catholic Church. One of the most controversial um, sort of methodologies of the Catholic Church that really helped spark the Reformation full swing was this idea um, that only certain people were qualified to read the Bible and to tell you what it said. That only certain people were qualified to understand God's Word. And by the way, this whole thing isn't necessarily going to be completely Christian-focused. I just want to give you some background, some context here. Um, but the Protestant idea was that anybody could read God's Word and understand it for themselves. Now, I'm a pretty big proponent of this idea, that anyone can be their own theologian, anyone can be their own, uh, their own cardinal, anyone can be their own father. Yes, um, learning through um, scholars, through your pastor, your priest, whatever the case may be, is good. If you're a Christian, if you're trying to lead the Christian life, it's a good thing to do. But you can read the Bible and you can understand things from it, right? In general. The early Catholic Church, at the height of their sort of power, um, was like, no. The Bible is to be only in Latin and only the most learned of scholars are given access to it. I disagree, but I can kind of see where they're coming from a little, though. Because, and here's why, in the time between the Protestant Reformation and our modern times, this wasn't really much of a problem, but in these modern times of, and forgive me if I sound a bit like a bit of a boomer here, but in these modern times of, of laziness and decadence and over-prosperity, I guess laziness isn't the right term, because there's always been lazy people, but... In this time of safe laziness, where you can get away with being lazy because we're just so prosperous that we can just make it work, you know? It, it can just, it can work. In these modern times where man can give himself comfort through the creations of his own hands when there is no comfort to be found from the earth itself, when we have modern air conditioning and central heating, um, things might be a little, a little different, maybe, in terms of how widespread true understanding of the Bible is. Um, when you think about it, a relatively poor person, well, not poor, I, poor is a mindset, a relatively um, unwealthy person, a relatively non-wealthy person, by today's American standards, would be considered like living like a king in like the 1600s. You think of like the people who ruled the world 
in the 1600s, the people who commanded entire navies spanning the Atlantic and the Pacific, the people who just had power over the lives of millions of people around the world at their fingertips, relatively non-wealthy people by modern American standards are living like kings by their by their standards. We're li- we, the regular Joes, the, 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 the semi-struggling people, lower class in the U.S., are living like the rulers of the world just a few short centuries ago. You know, you take, you show, if you were to take somebody like a, like a, like a lord or like a king from the 1600s and bring them here, and you show them an air conditioner, they're going to be like, you can just make the inside of your house cool in the hot summer? Why don't I get this? I rule the world. You know? But self-education may have been the price we paid for some of this modern luxury. Or a focus on self-education. When the printing press brought the word of God to the masses, they might not have been ready for it, to be honest. And maybe they still aren't. Because in my, it is my belief that the most misunderstood phrase, the most misunderstood idea, the most misunderstood teaching in all of human history, far and away, not even close, no contest, no, without equal, without peers, the peerlessly most misunderstood phrase in all of human history is turn the other cheek. Christianity, ironically to most uh, atheists, I guess, is about freedom. About freedom from the shackles of sin and about freedom from the shackles of the world. Christianity is based in large part around the idea that your suffering in this world is nothing compared to the eternity of of grace that you will receive afterward if you go to the Lord through the Savior Jesus Christ. That's the idea behind Christianity. But one of the big ideas behind Christianity is that a person's only master, a person's only true authority, the, a person's only true unquestionable, unconditional authority is God, not other men not other people. Turn the other cheek, as so many people understand it, misunderstand it, is kind of antithetical to that. Um, But turn the other cheek as it's actually meant is actually all about that. Because, see, when most people think turn the other cheek, their idea of it is if somebody is doing bad things to you, Just accept it. Just let them do it. Just roll over and be a doormat. That's what drives a lot of people away from the idea of Christianity, honestly. This idea that you have to just be a doormat and just turn the other cheek, right? Oh, but little do they know that that's... That's basically the opposite of what turn the other cheek means, okay? It's it's, it's that far. That's pretty much the opposite of what it means. And this is what I mean when I say I can kind of understand where the idea that um, understanding of the Bible can only come from these very learned central authorities, where I can see where they're coming from. Because in order to understand what turn the other cheek really means, you have to understand the socio-political and cultural climate of Roman-occupied ancient Judea, and you have to understand Roman superstition in order to understand what Jesus is talking about. In order to, in order to truly understand what Jesus is talking about, you have to know about the socio-political and cultural climate of Roman occupied ancient Judea and of Roman superstition um, as it relates to that. So, the full phrase for those wondering is 
If a man strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now, if Jesus would just wanted to say, eh, just roll with the punches and let people do whatever they want to you, why does he specify the right cheek? In fact, why does he specify the cheek at all? He could just say, yeah, if, if a man whips you on the back, present him your front so he can whip you there too, or something like that. No, 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 no. You got, you, you got to understand. This is my right hand. This is my left hand. Because of these things like modern hygienics and running water and antibacterial soap, I can use both of these hands for pretty much whatever I want. I can eat with either hand. I can cough into either hand. I can touch my face and my body in general with either hand. I can um, clean up after myself after using the bathroom with either hand. But such was not the case in ancient Rome. You see, in ancient Rome, the left hand was considered evil, or at least uh, unclean. Uh, similar to the uh, Jewish idea of uncleanliness. The left hand was unclean. And given the levels of, of hygiene and, and the, 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 what kind of bathrooms they had in ancient Israel, or an, yeah, ancient Israel and ancient uh, Judea and ancient Rome, most often it was literally unclean. And... The word sinister, you may have known this, comes from the uh, word for left-handedness, because the left hand is evil, right? The left hand's evil. So, let's say that I am a Roman soldier, and I am in your Judea, smacking your dudes. You, an ancient Judean, are lower than me. So much lower than me that I can, I can literally walk up to you and smack you and there's, oh, there's nothing you can do about it, sir. Nothing you can do at all, I say, because I am the Roman soldier and you are the lowly Judean. Well, Jesus wasn't down with that idea. No, not at all, sir. No, 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 no. See, here's the thing. Because you, so this was your, 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 cleaning up after yourself when you use the toilet hand, your left hand, this is your literally everything else hand. Okay? Everything you could do one-handed besides wiping yourself was done with your right hand. And that superstition about the left hand, driven partially by reality, by the literal uncleanliness of it in many cases, I mean, you can, you can rinse your hands off with, you know, the rose water and everything, but still, like, the left hand, I mean, it's evil. That left hand's evil. It's got e little, little evil spirits living in it, okay? So, you're a, I'm a Roman soldier, and I go to smack one of these lowly little Judeans living in their little Judea, following their little Jesus. Well... There's only two hands I can use to smack him, left and right. Now, I can't smack him with my left hand, because if I smack him with my left hand, oh, now I'm evil. Because, because I just use my left hand for something other than cleaning myself after using the, the bathroom. That's evil. Even though I'm a Roman soldier and it is my divine right under Jupiter and the Emperor to go around smacking ancient Judea's left, right, and center as I please, even though that's the case, I can't use my left hand, okay? Can't use the left hand. So I must be using my right hand. If I, the great Roman soldier, am going to smack these little Judeans silly, it must be with my right hand hand. So we've established that. You gotta use the right hand for smacking your Judeans. But, let's say I walk up to one of these lowly Judeans and I smack him with the front of my hand, with the palm and, my, and the underside of my fingers. I mean, I could. It's my right to do so because I am the Roman soldier, but I would never do that. You know why? Because smacking someone with the front of your hand, well, that's calling them your equal. If I go up to you and I smack you across the cheek with my, with my, with the open part of my hand, if I give you an open hand forward slap on the cheek, I am basically assaulting you as an equal, that you are equal to me. So I would never use the front of my right hand 
to smack one of these lowly Judeans because that would be equi- uh, that would be equating them to me, and I am the Roman soldier, and they are the lowly Judeans, so they are not my equals. Therefore, I must backhand them. I will smack them with the back of my right hand. See, you have two hands, and at two sides per hand, you have a total of four hand-side combinations with which you can smack your lowly Judeans as a Roman soldier. But the only real option available to you is the back of your right hand, because left hand either side, that's evil. You're evil. You don't want to go to Hades and be tortured by all eternity and, like, chewed on by Cerberus. No, 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 no. So you're going to use your right hand, but you don't want to imply that one of these lowly Judeans is your equal, so you're specifically going to use the back of your right hand, okay? Back of the right hand. So... You go and you give, you reach, you reach back and you deliver a good old backhand slap to the right cheek of that lowly Judean. Because think about it, this is my right cheek over here, this is my left. You go, you can backhand me on the right cheek all you want. You can't really backhand me on the left cheek, at least not with any good force. It doesn't really work unless you like come up behind me, I don't know. But if you're coming up to me from the front, because you're an honorable Roman soldier and you're teaching me my place by backhanding me, your only good real target is my right cheek. Ah, this is where it all comes together. If a man strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Because let's say I, the great Roman soldier, walk up to one of these lowly Judeans and I backhand him across the right cheek. And suddenly, he does something I didn't expect. He turns his left cheek toward me. Again, I can't really get a good grip on on the left cheek. I can't backhand him. You know what this lowly Judean, this little subjugated Israelite, is doing to me? He's saying to me, without words... If you're going to smack me on my right cheek, if you're going to backhand me, go ahead. Hit this left cheek too. But the only way that I can really get a good slap on him with on his left cheek is with the front of the hand. When Jesus said, if a man turns to you, if a man strikes you on his, on, when Jesus said, if a man strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also, he was telling his followers, do not allow other mere humans who are equally as, as, as minuscule in comparison to God as you are. See, that's the big thing about Christianity. We're all children of God. We are all equally beneath God. We are all equal to each other because think about like this. The difference between one and positive infinity versus the difference between two and positive infinity doesn't matter, right? So when you think, I'm a human, now compare me to God. The difference is infinite. Take this Roman soldier. Take Emperor Caesar. And compare him to God. Well, the difference is it is infinite. When that lowly Judean in Roman-occupied Israel turns his left cheek to that Roman soldier who just struck him on the right, he's sending him a message, a very powerful message. Hey, buddy. Hey, you there. That Roman... You... The the Roman soldier... The Roman soldier... Part of the force that conquered this land... In a military conquest... The Roman soldier... Given a commission from the emperor of Rome... To be in this land and subjugate our people... The Roman soldier... Who is... Who is... Who claims to be given the divine right by Jupiter to serve the emperor and to come into our land and subjugate us and treat us like we are your slaves to be ordered around as you please? Hey, buddy, you, 
that Roman soldier over there, you, yeah, I'm talking to you, buddy. You're my equal. You, the great Roman soldier, commissioned by Emperor Caesar, by the divine right of Jupiter and the other gods of your pantheon, you are equal to me, the lowly, occupied, subjugated Judean. When a man strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And when the global elites, when the Bill Gateses and Jeff Bezoses and Joe Bidens and and Hunter Bidens and and Wall Street bankers of the world tell you that you are just a lowly, worthless serf peasant whose sole worth in life is to serve them, to work on Bill Gates's farm and spend your measly earnings on Jeff Bezos's website, when these elites tell you that they are worth more than you, when they tell you that they are more important than you, when they tell you that they are above you in worth and value and that they are a different class of human beings to you, when these elites of the world tell you that you are nothing but scum on the bottom of their boot, look them in the eye and tell them, you're equal to me. I'm equal to you. One equals one. Jeff Bezos, I'm your equal. I may not have as much gold as you, as much money as many stocks. I don't have your planes. I don't have your boats. I don't have your cars. I don't have the sway you have over over corrupt politicians in Washington. But you know what? I'm a human being, and so are you. And that makes us equal. Period. End of story. Your your planes, your money it doesn't add to you. You're a person. I'm a person. Bill Gates, you're a human. I'm a human. And we're equal. So if Bill Gates ever rides up to you in his Roman Legion armor and he backhands you across the cheek, turn to him the other cheek and say, no, Bill Gates, if you're going to smack me, do it with the front of your hand and admit that we're equals. Look Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg or Jack Dorsey or Joe Biden or Chuck Schumer or Nancy Pelosi or Dianne Feinstein or Andrew Cuomo or Gavin Newsom. Look them in the eye and you tell them, you admit that you are equal to me. That is what it means. <sighs> to turn the other cheek. This is a North Sea Hero, signing out.